This is the Trauma Adult Physical Assessment Skill. This skill demonstrates the care and assessment of a trauma patient. The first step in this skill is to make sure you have the appropriate PPE precautions. I'm going to start with gloves and eye protection. The next step is to ensure scene safety. So I'll be assessing the scene and the environment for any potential hazards. I'm going to request any additional resources I may need and consider the number and location of all my patients. I'm going to determine the mechanism of injury as I approach the scene. As we approach the patient, we have a mechanism of injury of vehicle versus pedestrian. So I'm going to have my partner immediately place and maintain manual stabilization of the patient's cervical spine. And I'm going to approach the patient, form a general impression of the patient. I have a Caucasian female, mid-20s, appears to be about 60 kilograms. I'm going to look for and control any major hemorrhage that I see. I see nothing life-threatening at the moment, so I'm going to determine the patient's level of consciousness. Ma'am, ma'am, can you hear me? Applying painful stimulus. So the patient is unresponsive. I'm going to assess her airway. I'm going to have my partner open her airway with a jaw thrust maneuver. I'll insert an airway adjunct if needed. I'm going to assess the patient's breathing. I'm going to expose the chest. I'm going to palpate the chest. I'm going to auscultate the chest. I'm going to manage any injuries that will compromise airway and breathing. I'm going to apply oxygen therapy, 15 liters via non-rebreather mask. Now I'm going to check the circulation. So I'm assessing a pulse. I do have a radial pulse, checking the rate and quality. Assess the skin, the color temperature, condition, and the capillary refill. I'm now going to expose the patient. So I do note a fracture there, but I'm going to be looking for and controlling any major bleeding. I don't see any obvious hemorrhage. I'm going to check the patient's pupils. Checking for reactivity. So I've assessed that the patient's GCS score is 3. So this is a high priority patient, so I'm going to apply a C-collar. Now going to log roll the patient and assess the posterior thorax and lumbar areas using a third rescuer if available. On your count, one, two, three. Looking for any deformities or bleeding. And then going to log roll the patient back onto a long spine board and initiate rapid transport. After packaging and transporting the patient to the back of the ambulance, I'm going to get a baseline set of vital signs to include a blood pressure pulse, respiratory rate and quality, SpO2 level, and a pain scale if appropriate. Next, I would obtain a patient history if the patient was responsive, such as a sample or OPQRST history. 
I'm now going to move on to my head to toe assessment. So I'm going to be assessing the head and neck, assessing the facial areas, assessing the ears and nose for drainage. I've already palpated the back and the spine. I'm going to check the position of the trachea, check the jugular veins. I'm going to again palpate the chest. Again, auscultate the chest. Going to assess the abdomen. I notice some bruising. I'm going to palpate the abdomen. I do have a little bit of distension. The abdomen appears to be rigid. I'm now going to assess the pelvis, checking for stability. Pelvis is stable. Assessing the lower extremities. I do note an open fracture. We're removing the patient's shoes. I'll be checking pedal pulses and sensory and motor function if the patient was alert. Assessing the upper extremities. I note some abrasions. Checking a radial pulse. Note a laceration, some more abrasions, checking radial pulse, and I would be assessing motor and sensory function if the patient was alert. I'm now going to manage any of these secondary injuries. Laceration to the forehead. Once I've completed my head to toe exam, I can apply additional monitoring devices such as ECG or blood glucose analysis. I may also initiate IV therapy or additional bandaging and splinting if necessary. Ideally, this patient needs to be transported to a level one trauma center or the most appropriate facility.